All right, happy Friday. Um, we're gonna talk about how to warm up properly for the lifts, because I feel like this is something you guys are fucking up and wasting a lot of time. Every single time I go to a weightlifting gym and I see everyone warming up, everyone is laying on something and they're scrolling on Instagram. That's like what the warm up is in weightlifting. Then that same person will bitch about how bad their body hurts because they warmed up like shit. Now, ideally, your warm up shouldn't take longer than 10 minutes. But for a lot of people, because they are social with their teammates and they have ADHD, whatever their excuse is, it can take like 45 fucking minutes. So I'm gonna give you a simple template on how to get in the gym. And from the time you walk in the door of the gym to the time you get on the bar, you've wasted no more than like 10, 15 minutes. So we're gonna go to the turf. All right, so with the foam roller, here's what we're not gonna do. We're not gonna put it right here, go like this, and then grab our phone and do this shit. This is like the ultimate weightlifter move to pretend you're warming up when really this is the, I don't wanna lift yet. I haven't had enough caffeine yet, so I'm just gonna fucking rub my back on this thing. That's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna find problem areas. So for me, my problem areas are my lats. My lats get super tight and my glute med. Those are the two things I foam roll and sometimes I'll hit my IT bands. But when we have those problem areas, that's all we're gonna foam roll. We're not gonna foam roll our whole body. It's a waste of time. And there's some evidence that shows it's not great before a workout. So spend one minute per problem area. One minute each. So I would do lat, glute med, both sides. It's four minutes. And really focus on being like getting into these spots. Don't be on your phone. Best way to warm up is to take your phone and like get it far fucking away from you. So you can actually focus on what's happening. So I would get in to my lats, find all the tight spots, move the foam roller up, get the glute glute med the best I can, find all the areas that are extra tight, just one minute, you don't need any more than that. Obviously you can keep grinding these spots down to a pulp, but you don't really wanna do that before you train. So hit everything, last spot is the lat, and then we move straight on from that. So what we're gonna do next is when we're going into the Olympic lifts, you don't want to do a lot of static stretching. Uh, you don't want to open up the joint capsules too much because that creates instability. And when we're diving under weights, putting barbells overhead, we don't want any instability. So I really encourage some sort of dynamic stretching. Um, and I'll show you what my routine looked like back when I was training hard. Um, but you wanna stay moving the whole time. You don't want to stop like at all. So what I would do first is I would start, yeah, half kneeling hip flexor, and I would bounce back and forth, literally like 15, 20 reps each, and I would just try to sit a little deeper and relax a little bit more every time. You're not holding the top end of the stretch, the max stretch, longer than one second. We're just getting there, getting out of there, then we'll switch, and then if I wanna like make it really active, I can get here and we can just walk it because this will kind of warm up the hips too with you moving your feet. Then from there, we're gonna hold this and we're gonna go hand on the foot. We're gonna try to get the elbow closest, close as we can to the ankle, elbow to ankle, yeah, elbow to ankle. And then we're just gonna rotate here. And if you want to make it more active, you can go here, elbow, up. And then obviously you can keep switching through. If you want to actually like warm up fast, I would recommend alternating side to side on these exercises. Don't just burn out one side, try to switch. And if you're able to do that, then it just gets the hips fired up. Like this motion right here of bringing the leg up and then moving, going back, switching, moving the leg up, that's gonna create some sort of stimulus in your hips. It's gonna draw blood flow. So next, we're gonna go into a squat. 
here. We're gonna sit, bounce around, try to drive the knees out a little bit. Then we're gonna grab the feet, kick the hips up. We're gonna push the knees straight, drop down. Both sides. And we're just gonna wrap through this until it feels about as open as it should. With this stuff, you don't really need to have like a certain number in mind. I would always do like 15 or 20 reps on these things, but you don't need to do that. You, you know when you start feeling warm, you know when things start to open up. You just go until you get that feeling. And once you have that feeling, you're gonna be good. Then the last thing I would do is like ATG split squats. Um, I would typically do it like onto a bench or something but we'll just fucking ball out and do it on the floor. So I'd take a really wide step, try to keep my chest up, and then we would lunge into that front leg as deep as we can. Really try to sit that hip right over the heel of the front foot and not let that back leg touch. I would do like three sets of five on both sides. Then we'd go to the barbell. All right, so we just did all that active movement and foam rolling. Foam rolling took five minutes. The movement took five minutes. Now we're gonna spend five minutes with the barbell. That's 15 minutes. And if you don't have any problem areas, you don't need to foam roll. You can just get in and start moving. And that would be 10 minutes. So with the barbell, the first thing I do is I'll start playing with the overhead position a little bit. So I'll get the bar overhead and literally start twisting trying to let it pull on the pecs a little bit. And this is actually great for your lower back. Because if you're sticking the feet in the ground and you're twisting, the hips are getting warm, the back's getting warm, the thoracic spine's getting hit. And then we would start warming up the SOTS press, which is, if you can SOTS press comfortably, you can snatch comfortably. So we'd start standing up, Hit about five reps. Then we would lean forward a little bit. Then hit five reps there. And then the last stage of this is we would sit in the bottom. You can have your weightlifting shoes on at this point. I would recommend not having your weightlifting shoes on at this point and just wearing flats or no shoes at all because that can definitely make things a little more difficult and make things feel easier once you do put the shoes on. But we're gonna sit down in the bottom. And we're gonna do a set of five here. Sit in the bottom. And then once I've got that sauce press opened up, I would do like probably three sets of five there with very minimal rest in between. Once that's done, we're gonna go to the tall snatch. This is the last exercise I would do, is tall snatch. So, we'd be here, we go up on, I'm scared, I'm going in flat shoes, but we're gonna fucking do it. We're gonna go up on the toes, elbows come up, and then we're just snapping under. So that's tall snatch. I would do about three sets of five there. And you can burn through all that in like five minutes. You should, because that's how you get warm. Um, but for the snatch, that's it. Let's pretend I'm doing my snatch warm up or my snatch workout right now, and we'll be back for clean and jerk shit. All right, so the really the only thing we have to get warm for the, uh, when we go from snatch to clean and jerk is our front rack position. The um, hips, the back, literally everything's warm except for this position and some of you will be able to flow right into it with no issues. Typically, I have to do something uh, to care for it a little bit. So I'm gonna show you the two stretches I do and then one exercise I do to prime the front rack. And that's all I do. You don't wanna overdo it, especially when you're in the middle of a workout. So come over here. So you're gonna find something that's like almost chest height, maybe a little lower. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your normal clean grip. This is normally a PVC pipe. PVC pipes are like 20 feet away, so I didn't wanna go get one. But you're gonna take your normal clean grip, reverse grip, like you're about to do a chin up, then you're gonna take your elbows, 
You're gonna push them in, put them down, and all we're gonna do is try to push those armpits towards the floor. And we're just gonna kind of move through this and the way we can make this dynamic is as we're pushing the armpits down towards the floor, we can act like we're doing curls with the PVC pipe and that's gonna lengthen the tricep which is gonna pull on the lat and be a little more demanding on that thoracic spine. And doing this in holding position and not letting the back arch a ton is really gonna open up that thoracic spine. So keep your posture through your torso. Don't get super long and arched. Keep it stacked. Maybe keep those abs active. Shoulder, or push the armpits to the ground. And we're just gonna hit some curls. Like 15, 20 reps there. If you've never done those, be careful because they can actually make you pretty sore uh, whenever I go for a long time without doing those. And then do them again, it, it fucks me up like bad. Next, we're gonna tend to the wrists a little bit. I typically don't like telling people to stretch your wrists or do anything with your wrists, just because the sole point of a wrist is to stabilize. And if we do any stretching or anything like that, we're missing out on some stability. But in the front rack, I find that if your wrists are tight and we go into that front rack, it can actually cause more issues because of the compromised position your hand gets in. So just doing a little something to warm up the wrists can help it feel a little bit better. It will take away some stability, but that's why we have wrist straps. So, all I do for this is I'll start with my fingers straight forward and just go side to side here. Keep the elbows locked out the whole time. Do that till it opens up. We're gonna flip the hands out to the side. We're gonna take the elbows, the pits of the elbows, and we're gonna turn them towards each other. We're gonna go side to side on these. And if you have bad wrists, this is going to suck. And then last, we're gonna take the wrist, or the fingers, point them at the knees. We're gonna drive the heel of the hand into the ground, and we're just gonna try to sit the butt back on the heels. Move around, wiggle around a little bit. Don't spend more than 20 seconds in any of these positions. But then when that's open, your front rack's about as open as it should be. But we need to prime it. We need to activate it and make sure it's locked in. So we go back to the barbell. And now we're gonna do SOTS press, clean grip. We're gonna find a good position here. And don't worry if you can't do these to the point where you're perfectly locked out overhead. The goal is just to sit here, get the bar overhead for a second, and stay balanced. I'll do two, three sets of eight on those, and then we're ready to clean and jerk. That whole thing took three minutes. And that's it. That's all the warming up you need to do. I would advise doing some light static stretching as a cool down, but you guys need to realize that part of Olympic weightlifting is mobility. Like you are training your mobility just as much as you're training your strength, training your speed, your positions are being trained too. Your bottom position, your mobility is being trained. So don't overdo it with the mobility stuff. Just get warm and start training. Now we'll outro. Oh. All right, that's it. Um, if you have any specific things you wanna see, um, drop those in the comments as far as warming up goes. I'll sprinkle them through training videos going forward. Um, but advertisements, ads, please stick around. See how long you can watch the ads. Try to PR your time of watching the ads. First one is the dog pack. This cycle of the dog pack is fucking dialed and the next ones are going to be dialed too. We have some time before we're really gearing up for competition. So this is where the fun training is. This is where we get to chase some heavy, heavy lifts and variations. <coughs> and we're not just maxing the snatch clean and jerk. We're going heavy and other shit too. I can't stop fucking burping. <laughs> Talking about the most important thing, the thing that keeps this whole ship afloat. I just start burping. But yeah, if you like what you see on the YouTube videos, you follow me on Instagram, I've helped you in some way. Think of making the dog pack your training program because it's what makes all of this possible. Literally everything, every bit of content I put out, I'm able to do that because of the dog pack. So if you want a program, and it's a great fucking program, I think it's the most well-rounded programming there is. 
There's the standard dog pack, dog pack gold. Uh, dog pack gold has videos. I comment every Sunday. I film videos for the key exercises and I also put um, auto regulation features on those. So you have three different options for the exercise, a light one, a moderate one, and a heavy one rather than just one option. So that allows you to auto regulate. That's why it's called the auto regulation feature. And go heavy when you feel good, pull back when you don't, blah, blah, blah. I think that makes the dog pack a very, very sustainable training program. And then apparel, barbell apparel, pick up some. It's the best shit in the game. Onyx straps, get you some of those, and supplements. Gorilla Mine just put out fucking energy shots. They're little, little 1.5 ounce shots. So if you just wanna get a thing of those, throw it in your car, and you will never show up to the gym without caffeine again. You just take a little swig, 200 milligrams, and then it's just mega dose with fucking nootropics. Um, it's a great fucking idea. It's like five hour energy, but it actually works. So check those out. All the links are in the description. And I will see you guys on Monday.